This is the practice test for the second Excel test over the last five days of Excel. And that includes uh, date functions, uh, financial functions, uh, advanced filters and uh, D functions or database functions, uh, the lookup functions, and three-dimensional uh, formulas. So let's start with the dates here. We want to put a formula in B2 that will always display the current date regardless of when the spreadsheet is opened and that is the today function which is the word today followed by a pair of parentheses. Birthdays in column C are date serial numbers. Format them as 14 March 2012 and so let's go to the end of this. Select them all and we're going to have to do the format cells because there are only two choices for dates up here and so let's go to date and I want uh, something like this but with a four digit year instead so let's uh, keep going and there it is with a four digit year and now age this year um, it will compute the age the person will be after his or her birthday so subtract the year of the birth from the current year and you can't use numbers you have to use formulas so I want to take the uh, current year which would be the year function and the current year is right there and I want to subtract the year, so I have to use the year function again, of the birth date. And so that person will be 23 this year. And let's scroll down and fill it in. And guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the dollar signs in. So let's put the dollar signs in there, and then we'll try copying it again. And that looks a lot better. Okay, now, put a formula in column E that will display the logical value true if the person has a birthday this month and false otherwise. So, I want to know if the month here is equal to the month here. So, uh, equals month of dollar sign B, dollar sign 2, minus the month of the birth date over here. And... Uh, well, that's interesting. It's formatting as a number for me. And um, let's do clear formats from that. And that didn't do it. Let's uh, undo that. Um, so that's going to be false. And did I do subtract? I'm sorry. I meant to do equals. Well, I don't know if the months are equal. So now let's copy that down. Okay, so since the current month is October, the only matches I should get down here should be where it is a uh, month of October for the birthday. And it kind of looks like it's working out. Okay, that takes care of our date functions. We use today, and we use the year, and we use the month. And some absolute cell references. Okay, now. If you invest $25,000, so let's fill in the numbers over here, and if you leave it in the bank without adding anything to it, so that means my regular payment would be zero, and uh, my annual rate is 8% compounded quarterly for 10 years, now that means four periods per year, not 12. Uh, how much will we have at the end? So my rate per period is going to be uh, a formula that says take this and divide it by this. And the total number of periods is going to be the years times the number of periods per year. So that should be 40. And then am I doing this at the I'm doing it this at the end. So the end would be a zero down here. And um, how much money will I have at the end? That's going to be a future value problem. So let's go to formulas and go to financial and go to FV. And the rate, remember, is always the rate per period, the number of periods, not the number of years. And the payment is always negative, so we'll put a minus sign here. And uh, then click on zero. And the present value in a savings problem is always negative. So that's the 25,000. And then the type is the 0 or the 1 here. And click on OK. 
and if you start out with 25,000 and just let it go without adding anything to it at 8 percent compounded four times a year for 10 years you will have 55,000 at the end okay the next one uh, if you borrow 30,000 so the loan amount would be 30,000 that's the also the present value and we're going to pay it all off so the ending balance will be zero the 10 percent is the annual rate and we're going to pay it back over 10 years and we're going to do monthly payments so it's going to be 12 per year now the rate per period is going to be the rate divided by the number of periods per year and the number of periods is going to be the number of years times the number of periods per year it's always going to be that way and uh, are we doing this at the beginning or the end we're doing it at the end so we need a zero here and our monthly payment um, much will your payment be? So we want to use the PMT function here. So let's go to financial, scroll down to the P's and choose PMT. And the rate remembers the rate per period. The number of periods is 120 uh, years times periods per year. The present value of a loan is the amount you borrow. Future value is usually zero. And the type is going to be this. And then if we click on OK, our payment is going to be three hundred ninety six dollars and forty five cents it's a negative number you don't have to change it on the test but uh, if you don't like looking at a negative number for that you just put a minus sign in front of the P up here and we're good okay we currently have fifty thousand so that would be a present value and we're going to save uh, our goal is two hundred thousand and our monthly savings is two hundred and um, we want to have that happen in 10 years. And um, interest is compounded monthly, so it'll be 12 periods per year. At the end of every month, it'll be a zero. What annual interest rate? OK, so let's, let's compute the number of periods. It's going to be years times periods per year, so it's going to be 120. And we need to find out the rate. So that's going to be the rate function. So let's go up here and scroll down. And there it is. Remember, this is going to give us the rate per period, too. So the number of periods is 120. Payment is always negative. So let's put a minus sign and then click on the 200. Present value in a savings problem is always negative. So let's uh, click on the 50,000. Future value is my goal, and the type is uh, zero, and click on OK, and it's 0.95%. Now I have to get the annual rate, so I need to take that and multiply it by the number of periods per year, and I get 11.40%. Okay, let's try our database functions here. Um, Use an advanced filter to determine stocks in the S or the H category. So the category column is here, and I want S or I want H. So, you know, if it's OR, they have to appear on separate rows. Um, I, I want the ones that have a value. Let me see. Total current value. So total current value is the last column here. Uh, of greater than or equal to 10,000. And same thing for both of them, so I have to repeat the rule. So the rule is put another zero on there. So these are two separate rules. S greater or equal to 10,000. H greater or equal to 10,000. Okay, I have to do both. If I didn't put this down here, if I just left that blank, then I would get the S's that are 10,000 or more, but I get all of the H's. So if I want to put that restriction on the H ones, then I have to put it on both. So if I do my advanced filter now, which is on the data tab, and go to advanced, um, and you know, yeah, I always want to start out in my data here so I don't have to do any selection. So let's start over here. So it selected my data for me. My criteria range is going to be from here to here. Don't need to include name because there's no rule in the name column. Click on OK, and it looks like there are, down here, tells me there are 12 that meet that criteria. So all the numbers here should be 10,000 or more, and everything over here should be an S or an H, and it looks like that's true. Now in J2, I want to put a formula to determine how many companies, so I'm counting the companies, meet the criteria above, okay? And I should get 12 for that, so that's going to be a D count. So um, we have to do the FX on that one because, and then uh, choose the uh, database category, and I want D count, actually let's do D count A because we're going to be counting column that's not 
numbers. So um, the database is going to be um, this stuff over here, which goes all the way down to row 39. And the field I want to count is column number one, and the criteria is going to be this stuff up here, and hit OK. And gives me count of 12. Uh, I'm going to um, clear the filter for a second here, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give this a name. It's already got a name. OK, so uh, I'm going to give this a name of database okay let's just say data to make it shorter okay so now I want to count the number of shares that meet or not count add the number of shares that meet that criteria so um, actually let's go back and reapply the filter here and I should start out in the data so let's do an advanced filter and same as before I click on OK I should get 12 and I do now let's do a count a sum of the number of shares so um, that's going to be D sum, and I'm going to have to scroll here. And the database is going to be data, and as soon as I finish typing it, it shows up over here, so I know I typed it right. And the field that I want to add is the shares column, which is column three of my table, and this is called criteria. And click on OK and I get 12,950. Now let's just double check this. If I drag the mouse over those numbers, it'll give me the sum down here, 12,950. And um, I, the last one is determine the highest current value, current total value, column G again, of the ones that meet the criteria. So that's going to be D max. So let's go to J4 and let's go to our FX and we want D max, which is right there. Click on OK. Database can be data, and the field is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't want the value. Highest value, yes, that's column six. And criteria is going to be criteria. And click on OK. And so the highest value over here, and that is not correct. That is 56,000, one, two, three, four, five. I got the wrong column that is column 7 so let's go back and change that to a 7 and uh, 66 is the biggest number in that column okay let's do some lookups uh, put a formula that will look up the cost of the item listed in G2 so here it's going to be listed by item name and I want to look it up so let's go to uh, formulas and let's go to lookup and reference we want V lookup my table is going to be here, uh, I'm sorry, my lookup value is going to be this, my table is going to be this, and I want the cost, which is going to be column three of the table, and uh, there's a little hint here, it says note that they're not in order, which means I have to do an exact lookup, so I have to put false in here. And the cost of a stroller should be 145.67. And just to check here, let's put aspirator in, and it should give 256, and it does. Okay, now down here, I want uh, the markup, so that'd be column four. So I'm going to copy the formula. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going I'm to paste it in, and it's G2, A2 to D6, which is correct. If I double click on it, it will highlight the items for me. Uh, but this time I want um, okay, column three in there. Uh, one, two, three. Markup should be column four. Okay. Yeah, I thought I had to change something. There we go. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Uh, G two. I didn't type a four. How about that? So the markup is 0.45. Well, if you want, it's yeah, it's 45%. If you want to make it look pretty, we can go here and do that. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is some 3D stuff. Put formulas in B3, the yellow cells up here, that will compute the totals by adding the corresponding cells on this sheet and this sheet. Okay, so I want this number and this number to be added and go right here. 
so that's simple just uh, point at the ones you want so I want this watch your formula up here and then a plus and then I want the one for 2011 and that's this one right here so check and make sure it's 2010 coffee b3 and 2011 coffee b3 then you gotta remember to hit the enter key don't go back and click on your uh, summary sheet yet it'll take you back there when you hit enter and now we can just copy that down and we can copy that across and we're done with the practice test.